this is Pete Batty with Ubisense and I'm going to give you a quick demo of our new My World product which uses Google Maps to display uh, rich GIS data and really give you a very user-friendly interface to be able to view, query and search that. So it's been initially primarily focused on small world data. Uh, small world's the, the leading GIS for utilities and telecoms and that's where I come from. And so we've done quite a lot of work to be able to get small world data into this. But it also works with Esri data. We use a system called Arc to Earth on the back end, which also uh, has support for Esri. Uh, and a lot of our functionality is quite generic. So while we're initially focused on small world and utilities, we see this potentially being applicable in other application areas. So if you're interested, please contact us about that. So let's show you some of the functionality. So you can see on the left here, we have uh, some nice help that summarizes what you can do with the system. We've tried to make it very intuitive so it really shouldn't need any training. Let's zoom in on the map and you can see there's a Google background map and as we zoom in uh, you can see more detail of the network here. I'll just turn off the Google background map for a moment. If we turn on the small world base map it's a fairly minimal map like a lot of utility maps are so just bringing in the Google base map gives you a lot more context than you would have otherwise. You can also use other Google base maps of course the aerial map and the hybrid map here which are both nice for, for different things. So let's zoom in just a little further and if I click on one of these circles here as a pole and we can see the attributes on the left here. This is a partial list of attributes from the GIS. We can display the full list there and we can be quite flexible in displaying different subsets. Uh, here's information about equipment related to that poll. That's actually not all fully implemented yet, but we'll have uh, quite a bit of information about related items and upstream and downstream network devices, that kind of thing there. And then at the bottom, a nice feature we have is uh, integration with Google Street View. So this is not just a picture of the, uh, of the poll. It's actually a, a dynamic street view. We can drag it around, look around. Uh, and let me expand that. And now you can see a larger view in even within the street view here we can uh, display these markers which is quite a nice feature so we can see the customer that lives in that premise just mousing over if we click we can see all the data about that customer I can see information about the poll here and then if I look around I can check out the customer who lives here and let's look a bit further down the street um, so I can click on a poll that's down the street and if I click a second time it takes me to the best view for that poll so we feel this is really very powerful for applications relating to uh, poles and other overhead equipment. You see we can very quickly skip down the street here. And uh, in general these views are calculated automatically but they're not always going to be exactly right. So we have the ability to adjust those. So you can see here this pole icon actually doesn't quite match up with where the pole is um, uh, in the real world. So if I if I zoom in here on the map, I can actually uh, drag that icon and it moves in the street view there, which I think is kind of cool. So we can move it to where we think the right location is. We can adjust the view here slightly and then just say save. And then the next time we come back to that view, it will have saved that. So let's go and look at that poll. We'll come back here. And you see it's uh, remembered where I moved those things to. So you can very quickly adjust that street view and improve its accuracy. But we found in general we get uh, pretty good default views most of the time there. So that's some basic uh, capabilities in terms of displaying maps, querying attributes and so on. Uh, another powerful thing we can do is Google style search with autocomplete. So uh, let me start searching for a poll number say. Um, I can click on that. It takes me straight there. And that poll is highlighted. I can see its attributes. I can search on a different attributes, say asset ID. And so the nice thing here is users don't have to know anything about the, the data model or field names or table names or anything. They can just type uh, something that makes sense to them, a value that makes sense to them, and, and we'll find that. And then let's do one last search, say, for, uh, for a customer. Uh, so uh, again, we get the autocomplete. You can click on that and go straight to the customer and now we can see the street view of that customer's property. So we think this search is, is very powerful. We can also uh, do uh, so, uh, reports through this. Uh, so for example if I start typing 
uh, poll. I can see there's a query called polls in map window. And there'll be a lot more of these in the system as we develop things. And then you see there's interaction between the list here and the uh, items in the in the view. Uh, and that works both ways around as I mouse over things here. Shows me basic information and highlights the right thing on the list. And then, of course, you can do uh, regular Google searches too. So if I type in uh, an address, uh, then uh, it will go off and do an appropriate Google search. So that takes me to the address 22 Clinton Avenue. Or I can say try, try Church and Central. So it's, it's very flexible, more flexible than a lot of uh, typical utility GIS systems, certainly uh, in terms of the way it will do geocoding, that you don't have to type in a full address. It will assume you're in a, a certain, the current town, that kind of thing. So that shows you the basic search capabilities. Now let's uh, show you uh, how we can overlay additional information on the map. So. An idea that we like to talk about is the idea of an enterprise mashup. You hear a lot about mashups on the web, pulling in data from different sources and overlaying them on a map. So here I asked to see uh, current outage information. So that's being pulled from a separate outage management system. I can click on these outages and see information about how many customers are out, how long they've been out for. And uh, similarly, I can see the locations of all my trucks currently that that's coming, that's being pulled dynamically from another system. So it's basically very easy to overlay any other KML or GeoRSS file. Um, if we look at the map options we have here, and this is very easy to configure, the different options on this screen here. Uh, we can, for example, show live traffic is another feature that Google gives us. Uh, here the freeway is all clear at the moment, and depending on where you are in the country, you may get more detailed traffic information. Here it's just on the freeway, but in a lot of places uh, it's more broad than that. And then finally, let me show you one other thing, which is uh, the use of geo-referenced photos. So this is something I think that a lot of GIS applications could make more use of. Let's just put the aerial back backdrop on. So here's some pictures that I took just walking along a street in Denver with my iPhone. So I went and took pictures of all the poles along the street here. And the iPhone automatically records the location with the GPS. And so then I can just email them in. In this particular case, I'm storing it on Flickr, where uh, the online photo sharing site, where you can store them either privately or publicly. And there's a lot of different places you could store those, but the same principle applies. But anyway, so they, they basically appear on the map within a minute or so. And I think this is re really potentially valuable in, in various situations. One is just to get field workers, whenever they go out and install something or inspect something or maintain something, to start taking pictures and very quickly you can build up this rich data set which can give you a lot more information than you have in the GIS about exactly how the poles are configured or uh, other information like that. And then a second scenario is uh, for damage recovery after a storm, getting members of the public to email in pictures or upload pictures and that way you can very quickly get a view of the damage assessment without, uh, uh, without having to send your own employees out. Okay and then so one final thing I'll show for now is just how we can email a link to a map. So actually let's just go back to the area where we've got some network data. So I'll zoom in here and let's find an area. So suppose I want to send uh, a link to this to somebody else and again this is quite commonplace in the in the uh, sort of Google Maps area but with uh, more traditional GIS it's, it's harder to do but so I can say email a link uh, to this map. So I just click here. So that brings up Gmail so I can just say I'd like to email that to myself and you can see we've got a link in here so I'll send that off. And so now I can view that on any machine uh, regardless of I, I don't need any special software to be installed there. So actually what I'm going to go and do is go and look on my iPad and let's see if we can view the map there. So here we are on the iPad, that email's come over, and I can just click on the link here. And it will bring up that same map that we just sent from my laptop. So this is really very powerful, we don't need any special software installed, again just to reiterate, this is just a standard browser. And of course this has all the same capabilities that we saw in the previous demo, I can select on things on the map, see all the attributes, 
see a street view down here. Drag this around. So we think there's great potential for the iPad for use as a field device. And then last but not least, it works on the iPhone too, or other smartphones like the Android, etc. I can just tap on the map, select a poll, view the attributes for that poll, and even see the street view in the same way as we could before. So essentially this has all the same functionality uh, as the, the desktop uh, version, or the iPad version, but we've just reformatted things somewhat. I can tap on a poll, tap on a customer, let's tap on the poll and go to the best view for that. So, so essentially you have the same functionality but it's just reformatted to fit on, on the small screen. You might also notice it looks like a native application, it doesn't have any of the browser framework, uh, but it is still actually a web application. But you can just set up uh, certain parameters in your web page to make it run in that fashion. So uh, it can run across, like we said, the, the, the desktop or laptop, the iPad and the iPhone with identical functionality.